This is regular session, uh, mayor and council meeting, 6.04 p.m., Wednesday, the four, uh, November 4th. Uh, will you please uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, no, please uh, remain standing. We have an uh, invocation by Pastor uh, David Lopez from Abundant La Church. Abundant Life. Abundant Life. I'm sorry, sorry about that, Pastor. Abundant Life Church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of the Universe, we come before you asking you, Lord, for wisdom for today's meeting. We ask, my God, that today let us come together in unity that your light will be shined through all the people here today in our city. Heavenly Father, we're not asking for technology or riches. We need wisdom for today's challenges, for the things that we need to face today that is going to help not only the people today, but our children tomorrow. Heavenly Father, we pray for our uniformed men and women here and also abroad. Whatever they're at, that your protection will be with them. Bless this nation from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Let your shine be with this nation. Let us continue to enjoy the many blessings. And let this nation be a place of freedom, a place of peace. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Um, on call to the public, uh, we have uh, Mr. Victor Heddington. Uh, I'd like to go to the podium, just say your name. Mayor, Council, my name is Victor Heddington. I live in 124 at El Pastor in Rio Rico, Arizona. I'm here on behalf of the uh, National of the Nogales Police Officers Association. Uh, I see there's an agenda item there for the. Uh, benefits for retirees on the health benefit. I would like to ask for Mayor and Council to try and table this this time and make sure we can have another study session where we might be able to get invited and uh, to have in our, you know, to talk with Mayor and Council about what's going on and, and get clarify where, where it's going on. There's a lot of rumors, a lot of speculation of, oh my God, this is happening, that's happening. And I'd like to have the opportunity to be able to sit down in a study session and get the details of exactly what is happening so that we have input for this. And that's why I'm here to ask you guys to please table this and uh, give us an opportunity to meet. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Higgins, for uh, bringing that up. Uh, I, 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 guess, uh, I guess you're not the only one. We have also uh, Mr. Robert Lee Chanto. You'd like to step up to the podium, sir, and speak your name and that. My name is Robert John Cole. Live in Rear Rico, Arizona. I've been retired from the city police department after 29 years of service. Uh, seven of those on the street, 22 in evidence. The reason I'm here tonight, and this is the second time I've been to a city council meeting in 41 years. The reason I'm here, when I took the job back in 1975, there were a lot of benefits to become a police officer here in the city of Nogales, other than my own pride to be an officer. I saw a vision that if I stayed here in this city and worked here in this city, that I'd be able to take care of my family later on in life. And it happened. One of the biggest benefits this city has afforded me and my family was the medical. It's a tremendous plan. It was well thought out when it was given. And it's sad that it's being brought up to get rid of. I think there's a lot of options you mayor and the council people can find without 
jeopardizing so many different families in this community. I mean, there's always a solution to every problem. And the little guy doesn't have to get beaten on the head every time. And I think with uh, study sessions with people that represent, that are being affected, get some of those people in to talk about it. I'm sure they can come up with a solution that's happy and satisfying for everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Uh, do we have any other uh, help? Nobody else has, has, has uh, filled out a form. All right, Mayor. Yes, sir. I apologize sure. for not doing that. I didn't do it the last time, but God, it would be possible for me to speak and say a few words. Sure, Mr. Governor, please uh, step up to the podium. And... Thank you, Kate. Good afternoon, uh, Mayor and Council. Um, I just wanted to reiterate for some of the individuals that sat here. Uh, I am a retiree, uh, as you all know. I was here the last time we, we were discussing this issue. And, and I think, uh, you know, the main issue is obviously uh, cooperation and, and transparency. I think what has happened is that the uh, information has not gotten out appropriately because the last time I was here, uh, by chance I was told that there was going to be a meeting to discuss uh, the uh, retirement. Uh, insurance for retirees. Uh, yesterday, I found out that they found out through the post office that there was a notice about a meeting to discuss this item again. So, in checking with uh, some of the retirees, uh, none of them have ever been notified that there is a subject coming up with regards to the retirement benefits. And I think it's very important that that the, that the city become very very transparent with regards to that that they make those contacts with the individuals that are going to be affected so that they can get input uh, from these individuals. Uh, like uh, Mr. Junto mentioned, you know, he was looking forward to it. And like I mentioned before, I think that one of the main uh, reasons that some of the officers, either police officers, public safety, and, and some of the employees in all the departments here in the city have stayed uh, with the city uh, instead of going somewhere else is because they see that there is something for them in the future and that was that benefit uh, that was being provided and I know it's a very generous benefit I think you the city is very generous in that and I think in being generous you're, you're recognizing the effort the commitment and the dedication of these employees that you have working the street you know cleaning the street picking up the garbage providing public safety uh, the people that are working here in the office I think they're all looking forward to that. And, and I think uh, you should be credited and uh, commended uh, for hopefully continuing this, this program. Uh, like uh, Mr. Johnson said, uh, there can be concessions. And, and I think I understand, at least speaking for myself, that uh, the fund is obviously expensive to the city. And at some point, there will, will have to be some, some modifications, some concessions, and I think everybody uh, it's agreeable if that's all within within reason and it won't you know adversely impact uh, some of the employees i think uh, the employees that will probably be the most affected uh, will be the uh, street department the employees that are receiving the less salary that are looking forward to some type of a benefit when they retire because they're looking forward to it and if, you, if they have to pay for it that's going to you know take most of the money that they take home so hopefully like uh, Mr. Harris has said uh, there will be a study session at some point, and hopefully everybody is going to be impacted. Not only the people that have retired, but the people that are currently working with the city will be notified of how it would impact them in the future. And I think you would like to hear from each and every one of them. So you've got some loyal employees, uh, Mayor and City Council, and I think uh, you would do a service to them if you would continue somehow to provide uh, those benefits to them. Uh, that's basically what I have to say, and, and hopefully. Uh, this agenda item will be tabled and it will be given more consideration and hopefully more uh, attendance by some of the stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, for your input. Uh, sir, these, uh, uh, it seems like we have uh, quite a few people out there that are concerned about this. So thank, thank you very much for bringing it to our attention. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, I think we have this item on, on the agenda. so. We'll continue to speak on that. And uh, <clears throat> right now we have a number five presentation of, on the bridge constraints analysis by Kimmy and Horton Associates. Uh, I guess uh, we're ready for the presentation. Yeah.
Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor, uh, we have a representative from Kimberly Horn. Kimberly Horn was uh, the uh, contractor that we uh, we engaged to do uh, concept design uh, work on uh, three of the bridges that were requested of us by the Fresh Produce Association tied with the overweight uh, monies. Um, so uh, uh, the, the, the report is going to have uh, obviously the outcome of the analysis plus uh, recommendations and we'll make ourselves available to answer any questions right now. Nice introduction, Mr. Dilly, um, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, allow me to, to break the ice while I'm uh, while I'm getting this going here. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to see so many uh, familiar faces and friends. Uh, some of you don't know me, but uh, I think it was about five years ago I was uh, working at the county as the public works director um, and county engineer. So it's been uh, uh, I have a special place uh, in my heart for me, Al, so it's good to be back here. Um, let me get back to the beginning here. So, as uh, Mr. Billy uh, referenced, uh, I am one of the principals at the, the Kinley Harm Tucson office. I, I'm also uh, the project manager for this study. And uh, what we want to do tonight is is uh, give you the background and then share with you the results that we've uh, determined from from our study and what our recommendations for going forward are. So, uh, first of all, um, th this is a map of of the three areas we studied. There are um, three project areas that were included in the study: Gold Hill Road. Produce Row and Calle Sonora, all where they uh, intersect Grand Avenue. Um, furthermore, Project Vicinity, um, just to give you, all of the projects are, are north of Calle Mariposa. Um, and um, when, we, when we selected these, this was a collaboration between um, city staff and the uh, Fresh Produce Association. Um, these three were determined to be the most important that we included in our in our analysis. A little bit of background: uh, how we got here in 2011, ADOT uh, began allowing overweight trucks to cross the border uh, with an overweight permit fee. So what this allowed is um, the, the the original weight that trucks were permitted at was 80,000 pounds, and they increased it to 90,800 in exchange for a fee. Um, the fees are then collected by ADOT. Um, ADOT keeps 50% of those fees, and my understanding is the other 50% is divided between the county and the city so at about 25% each. Um, these fees are to compensate or offset um, the impacts due to these overweight trucks. And as I said before, uh, city staff, in, in collaboration with the Fresh Produce Association, uh, brought uh, these three locations to bear that we are going to talk about tonight. Um, the scope of the study, and to be real brief, um, and, and not get into the weeds on this, uh, we looked at upgrading all three of these locations to accommodate the overweight trucks, uh, accommodating them in the structural design of the bridges. The bridges are um, of varying ages. There's one that's over, according to the bridge records, over 115 years old. Um, then um, there, are, there are two other bridges which are newer. Um, uh, accommodating overweight trucks means that um, we don't know anything really about the design of the existing bridges. Um, there's not a really good way to, uh, to determine the structural integrity 
we don't know what the designer's intent was back then. Um, so we believe that all three of these bridges need to be replaced and designed to the higher standard to accommodate the larger bridges. The other components are improving traffic operations and improving roadway geometry. So the, who were the stakeholders on this project? Of course, the general public is at the top. Um, utility companies, uh, you'll see uh, a little bit later, we'll show you some of the, uh, the utilities that, that are constraints on this, on all three of these locations. Um, they include city utilities as well as um, uh, privately and uh, nonprofit utility companies. So um, we've got ADOT because all three of our projects connect to ADOT. We've got the Fresh Produce Association of the Americas. We've got Union Pacific. Um, this symbol right here is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. They are the regulatory branch that governs the uh, the disturbance of the Nogales Wash Channel. Uh, Santa Cruz County, um, they are the uh, administrators of the floodplain ordinance and the FEMA floodplain. And uh, so we, uh, we included all of these stakeholders um, in our study, uh, let them know what we were doing, um, utilize their standards to help us come up with the recommendations, and to identify all the constraints that are going to be present when we go to develop these projects. So I want to start with some of the issues. Um, this, is a, this is a picture from Produce Row right here. Um, congestion, we have congestion at all three intersections. Uh, you, can, you can see a train in the background here. When a, when a train is going by, we've got queuing, um, backing up onto the bridge. Um, this may not be the worst that it gets, but this is certainly uh, something we wanted to capture in our pictures here. Um, this happens to varying degrees um, on, on all three project locations. Um, this is uh, supposed to be a video, and it worked uh, an hour ago, and I, when I got here, um, I'm not sure if it's a final size or what, but I'll have to, wa I'll have to walk you through this because um, what this video was going to show, this is Smoky Lane. For those of you who aren't aware, Smoky Lane is a north-south road that connects to Calle Sonora, uh, opposite of, of uh, Hohokam. Um, trucks that turn off of, of Smoky Lane, uh, their turn radius takes them into the opposing lane, which is a safety issue. Um, the trucks cannot make the turn with the current geometry and the current radius, and it's a uh, it's a pretty significant safety hazard. This is um, that same location, but looking west. This is a picture to show the utilities, but I also notice you see this uh, damaged barrier here. That's that is a uh, a result of of a truck not being able to make that turn very well, um, and I'm, I'm sure there's been multiple that have hit that. Um, utilities, all three bridges have uh, gas lines across them, um, and one of them has a water line attached to it. Uh, the railroad is, is uh, close and a constraint on all three projects. Um, we obviously can't go over the railroad, there's not enough room. Um, the, um, the, the close proximity of the railroad to the wash makes it very challenging. The railroad owns its own right-of-way. Uh, you do have to get a permit to cross the railroad and do improvements in the railroad, so they are a, uh, a very big stakeholder. The FEMA floodplain. Um, I've got all three locations highlighted in black here. All three of them are in the flood floodplain, but also the floodway. Uh, the floodway is a uh, is a term that FEMA uses for the area that conveys the most flow. Uh, it's more restrictive use than the than the floodplain fringe. Uh, any any. Uh, projects that are done in the floodway cannot have any impact or any rise to the water surface elevation. So that's a constraint as we're looking at solving these problems, 
we also can't make it worse uh, on the floodplain. Bank erosion. Um, this is uh, this is at Produce Row, looking up um, on the um, the east bank upstream, and uh, there's been some mitigation, some debris, um, some rubble dumped here to, to to try to stop the erosion. So that's another thing that we incorporated into the bridge <coughs> design. A few, a few uh, goals I want to share with you about the design concept for each of these. Um, we talked earlier about accommodating heavier truck loads in the bridge design. While we're at it, improving safety with improved roadway geometry. We want to try to prevent uh, trucks turning into opposing, opposing traffic. And also redu reducing the traffic congestion, which is uh, present for a number of reasons. <coughs> the train causes congestion, but there's also uh, there's a lot of traffic on some of these roads and there's only one lane in each direction. So we'll talk about how we are, uh, what our recommendation is to solve some of this. So wh what you're seeing here is Gold Hill Road. We'll start at the most northern crossing and move down. Now, some of you may look at this and say, wow, what's all that red stuff on there? Um, that's intentional. Um, the, the, the red markings are utilities, and, and we wanted those to stand out because they are a significant constraint. Anytime that you do a project on the surface, a lot of times it looks, uh, looks like we should just be able to blow and go, but uh, we wanted to, to make sure it was clear that We've got a number of utilities in here. We've got um, federally owned, uh, well, the, the IOA interceptor sewer, which is the city of Nogales. Um, we've got um, gas lines. We've got electric, we've got water. Um, so these are, these are constraints that will have to be dealt with and there will be a cost to accommodate it. All projects have utilities, it's not a, it's not an inhibitor, but they have to be dealt with. So real quickly, um, this is Gold Hill Road. Our solution here is to improve Gold Hill by, this is the old alignment here. For those of you familiar with Gold Hill Road, you would know that you would have to make an awkward uh, right uh, to go up the hill. Um, there's kind of an awkward intersection here where the uh, Wilson Produce uh, entrance and and the Gold Hill Road um, access conflict with each other. It's not a true intersection. It's a stop condition at both of them, but um, what we attempted to do is improve that geometry by straightening it. This does have impacts. Um, this is optimal. Uh, as I explained to staff, um, these things, this is a planning level study. Uh, we, had, we have not uh, tried to mitigate impacts to properties at this stage. Um, that is certainly something that we would uh, follow staff's lead on as, as we went into later stages of this project. But there are impacts in the sense that uh, geometries of access change. Um, uh, acquisition of some property in order to straighten out this this roadway um, all in all it's improving the access to the road uh, creating uh, creating safe intersection geometry but also we've added a lane here so Gold Hill Road currently presently is a two-lane section now it's a three-lane section with a dedicated left turn lane here and what that allows is <clears throat> presently somebody who wants to, to turn right or go straight um, has to wait behind somebody wanting to turn left. Um, so the queuing will, it will improve as a result. The traffic analysis said that we needed a left turn lane here. Um, we would also match up the geometry on the, on the west side of Mesa Verde to the extent possible. We cannot improve the vertical, unfortunately, on Mesa Verde, which we all know is a problem as you approach Grand Avenue on Mesa Verde. There is a rise in 
in grade. Um, the reason we can't improve that vertical uh, segment of the roadway is because of the floodplain. Anything we did over there created a rise in water surface elevations, which was an impact to neighboring properties. Um, this is a new, a new bridge with bank protection. Uh, it's a new wider bridge to accommodate the new three lane section. I'm going to go ahead and move on now to uh, Produce Row. Produce Row, um, not much change in geometry. Uh, however, we also there is a warrant for a left turn lane. So now instead of a two lane section, we are proposing a three lane. Um, we do have a single sp we're proposing a single span bridge. Um, it, it will be wider than existing um, because this particular crossing was one of the more narrow. And we also wanted to try to address the bank erosion issues. You can see that we're uh, proposing some additional stabilization here. Um, all in all, this is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it's widening and um, addressing the bank erosion and a new bridge. Cali Sonora, this, this one requires a little bit more explanation and um, um, those of you familiar with Cali Sonora know it's a two lane section, similar, similar story to the other as is right now. But our traffic study suggests that we need a significantly larger uh, section through here. And what you're looking at here is, is now three, three lanes headed westbound and a single, single lane headed uh, eastbound. However, we widen this here for truck turning radiuses. So you'll see a little bit wider section here. It doesn't mean that there's multiple lanes. It's designed that way to accommodate uh, northbound trucks turning right. Uh, it will be a wider bridge, a two-span bridge. Uh, minimal bank protection to protect the abutments. Um, the, the more interesting thing here is the, um, the traffic operations. Some of you know that the problems here are queuing both directions. When there's a train or significant traffic, this gets backed up and through this intersection of of a Hohokam Drive here. So a lot of times left um, left turns from a truck sitting right here trying to turn on to Smoky Lane, he can't make that left turn because the traffic is backed up and so we get queuing this way as well. So the, it's a double whammy on this on this project and what our proposed solution, we looked at a couple different alternatives, I'll go through each of them. We are proposing to uh, not allow left-hand turns here by putting a no left turn and providing what we're calling the jug handle option which is a one-way loop realigning Hohokam Drive to the east. This will relieve some of the um, backup pressure and move this intersection away from the queuing that occurs especially during a, during a train. This one-way loop would be the way that trucks would follow in order to make an indirect left on, on Smoky Lane. Um, we also have a condition where Smoky Lane would be, um, have a pork chop is what we call this little island right here, pork chop, because it looks like pork chop. Um, you can make a right turn into Smoky Lane, but Smoky Lane can only make a right turn out or go straight. Uh, there would be no left-hand turns here. Uh, it accommodates everybody, and, and it would be different for those that are used to waiting to turn left at Smoky, but um, it is a more efficient operation. Here's another option, uh, the roundabout option. Um, those of you uh, familiar with roundabouts know that the advantage is, is it's a no-stop condition. Um, they are um, a safer option. Uh, collisions that do occur around the bounce are very minor. Um, they do require some getting used to. Uh, you can see that it takes up a smaller footprint. 
we would we would optimally uh, need to look at this to position it. We know this is feasible. Uh, we do think there could be some impacts on the north here, and so there may be some more refining of this particular concept here. Uh, but it would be the same. Um, no left turns for, for trucks on the Smoky Lane, and they would just have to go around the roundabout to get um, back to Smoky Lane. That, uh, that was a glimpse at all three of those alternatives, and um, we also put a cost to those based on um, the detailed breakdown of the construction items. We tabulated all the costs uh, that in order to take this forward, construction costs um, for Kais and Or would be in the realm of three million, design costs, 400,000, right of way, acquisition, potentially as much as 700,000, depending on the option. Total project cost of 4.8 million. Now, this other number that, um, pardon me, this other number that follows the cost, $1,062 per daily trip, that signifies, for those of you who are looking for a benefit cost type of uh, comparison, um, because of the traffic, the congestion, um, when we when we use the uh, on a per capita basis the number of vehicles that are using this, um, Cayo Sonora, you get the, the most bang for your buck uh, at one thousand sixty two dollar per daily trip. Um, <clears throat> produce um, so obviously when we look at these two here, they're both um, they both both cost more for a lesser benefit. So produce row. Uh, Less expensive, it's a smaller footprint, um, smaller bridge, um, less right of way cost, and, and so the project cost is um, down at 2.5 million. Gold Hill Road, construction cost 2.8 million, and uh, total project cost of 3.9 million. Uh, these do, this does include contingency. When we do a planning level study, we try to con um, uh, determine what what the constraints are and the cost, and we do put contingency in here because at this level, it's hard to know what's going to come up as you advance this to final design. So, we we do have some safety factors in these uh, cost estimates that could be refined as they move forward. <clears throat> uh, one other thing um, before I hit this: uh, these construction costs also include significant improvements at the intersections with the signals. ADOT is, uh, based on the traffic study, going to uh, want the city to improve the signal from a uh, split phasing to a, to a standard phasing. Um, the standard phasing is going to be more efficient, it will get more traffic through, um, and so there will be less congestion as a result. It also includes cost that uh, will be required by the railroad by impacting the railroad and widening it and reconfiguring their crossing arms and their safety equipment. So those are two significant constraints that uh, add to the cost that you might not normally see on a, on a, uh, on a typical city project. Project prioritization, um, this was a exercise to demonstrate based on factors um, to help us make our recommendation moving forward of what project we should um, we should advance and uh, recommend to the city staff that they should advance. So we looked at factors like existing level of service. Level of service is a measure of the, how well the, the road is operating. Uh, the, uh, uh, it looks at congestion, it looks at the number of vehicles, and, um, and this is all looking at the, the present situation. So in this particular, in this particular case, Cali Sonora um, uh, gets the most benefit, um, the, uh, has the worst level of service currently, so um, it's rated number one. ADT is uh, average daily traffic. Uh, Cali Sonora again is number one in that category. Truck average daily traffic is a little bit different picture. Um, Produce Row actually has more trucks than Gold Hill or Cali Sonora. Um, 
has less traffic overall, but has more truck traffic. Severity of crash history, uh, Gold Hill Road does have um, a fatality or two. Um, the fatalities are at the intersection. Um, when we looked at uh, being sensitive and looking into the, the results and, and why those accidents occurred, uh, they were not due to geometry on Gold Hill Road. Uh, they were driver air um, running red lights um, and on the Grand Avenue side, not on the Gold Hill side. Um, in in that uh, that that bumped Gold Hill Road into the number one because anytime you have a fatality, we, we treat that and weight that higher. Um, Kali Sonora though is interesting; it has 79 accidents in the period of history that we reviewed, and uh, there's something going on there. There's some some bad geometry, and. Uh, uh, but, uh, but there's no fatalities, but there is injuries. So it comes in number two and produce row as uh, the least, and so it's ranked three. So going into this last one, unsafe geometry, we talked about the opposing trucks going into opposing traffic off a of smoky lane. That's a pretty serious geometric deficiency that can cause some serious accidents, injuries. So um, it's rated number one. And then what we did was we averaged them here to come up with an overall rating, uh, thus uh, helping us understand that Kai Sonora really should be the project that's moved uh, forward first um, after this analysis. At least that's what our recommendation would be to see. So I, to, to finish up here, and um, Next, I wanted to provide some next steps. We provided this in the analysis itself, but this is just a, a glimpse of, of it. Um, the next step is um, follow prioritization order and begin with Calle Sonora. So looking at Calle Sonora, there's some right away that needs to be acquired if uh, that's, a, that's a pretty big prerequisite to moving this project forward. So that sometimes takes a while. Uh, that probably should be where this project starts. Um, with these budgets, these are um, planning budgets. Um, recommend that set aside and budget funding for design and construction. Um, thinking about the, the, the kinds of funds that come into the city from this overweight truck permit program, it will take multiple years in order to implement projects. Don't forget inflation factors. Um, for multi-year implementation um, because 10 years from now things will be much more expensive. Um, scoping the final design and construction documents um, would be a, a, the next step. And then getting right into permitting. The Nogales wash will require a Section 404 Clean Water Act permit from the Corps of Engineers. Um, that Corps of Engineers is always in a flux, and uh, it's always best to get that going and, and get their clearance. Then uh, after that permitting phase, then uh, you could um, hire a consultant to prepare plans, specifications, and estimate for, for the first project. Um, then you can begin utility, even if your construction funds aren't available, you could start the utility relocation process. Um, so that when your funds are available, you can bid it and the contractor can go. And finishing by constructing, and that would be the, the process for each of these. Um, but obviously, um, now that we've, we've at least looked at the constraints and set a footprint, I think you uh, uh, should feel comfortable to go forward and, and feel like uh, if you want these to move forward, you can use what we projected as the acquisition areas and start that right away acquisition process. <clears throat> that concludes my presentation. I'm sorry if I took too long. Uh, oh, I, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, well, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I got a few questions. Uh, you, mentioned, you mentioned that because of the level of, of design, you've got 
I believe we use 20%. 20%. Double check that and get back. Um, we we did a little bit more detailed breakdown um, in the cost estimate. I mean, we've got we've got the budget, the bid items lined out pretty well. But uh, being that this is going to require a little more detailed survey, um, um, when we start getting into permitting requirements and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, 20, 20%, we wouldn't want to go any less than that, but that's essentially what we have in there. So and that's- what, what level of design would you say you're at? What? We, we are calling it 15%. 15% design, so you, you got a long ways to go to tighten that, that number? So. Generally speaking, at 30%, we would reduce it to 15% contingency. Um, 60% we would be down at 10, 5% at 90, and then when you deliver hundreds of plans, you remove that contingency. Um, and the SR 189 quarter study, I know they've been looking at, at traffic counts, and uh, I don't know if, if your traffic modeling is matching up with theirs or not. I don't know if they, if they brought you into their discussions or not, but I, I looked at that, that one intersection of my close on Granted, I think they got like three left turn lanes because of the traffic volume and, and the, all the issues that you described with the traffic backing up at, because of the railroad and the bridge. Are, are, you, are you involved in those discussions? or We just in this past week started exchanging some information. We had asked ADOT a while back for that, um, but um, it wasn't until we provided our drawings to them, then all of a sudden uh, they gave us some information this past week. So um, we haven't we haven't really been in the loop on that, and uh, um, do you anticipate that going to impact some of your design? There's certainly a possibility, and um, I haven't seen the three, I haven't seen the the, the turn bays like you said, but uh, we we. Uh, we set our footprint based on the the existing through lanes and matching those up. If those through travel lanes don't change their and and they widen and they provide the turning lanes um, and maintain those through lanes, it will be fine. But if they they change those, then we probably will have to uh, look at accommodating something different. Um, we we think. And I've told Mr. Billy this as well, that um, certainly in the final design process, your consultant can address and you know refine some of these these things. But in order to get you a budget to... I believe they were looking at traffic volumes up to 2040, and I don't know how, how far into the future your, your models <coughs> forecast the traffic. Uh, I think we used 2040 volumes for future, but I don't know if that included new traffic as a result of Mariposa being improved. Uh, Shane, what do we have right now in overweight fees? Approximately 125. And our average annual take is what? Seven. Seven hundred thousand. Uh, last meeting, uh, Jaime Chamberlain mentioned that you and the mayor were, were going to go meet with the governor to talk about the possibility of rolling these three bridges into the SR 189 funding along with, with uh, Ruby Road. How, how did that go? Mr. Vice Mayor, Mr. Mayor, uh, if you want to answer, Mayor, I can do that either way. Well, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I think, uh, and I know the mayor will uh, fill in any blanks that I leave uh, open, but um, I think the meeting was, was generally a very positive one uh, in light of, light of the fact that that particular day legis the, the, the legislature was in session and they were, they were considering the K-12 uh, bill and a lot was on, uh, on the table for the governor. Uh, he did carve out, uh, what, 30 minutes, 40, 40 minutes? Little, yeah, it was a little more. Yeah, yeah. So it was, 
Uh, Carter Doggy was there, uh, present, and listening to the, the various um, uh, the various arguments in favor of SR-189. Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, as mentioned, Vice Mayor, did bring up the possibility of, um, you know, if we're going to if we're going to come up with some kind of creative financing package for SR-189, why not, um, given all the stakeholders around the table, why not consider uh, a bigger benefit to the to the region? And uh, you know, one of those bigger benefits was to consider doing these uh, various bridges that we had begun the design work on. Uh, you know, the governor it didn't specifically respond exactly to that. Um, uh, but uh, all the way around was completely uh, supportive of SR 189's um, uh, getting it expedited in the process, and directed us to you know to work with ADOT staff uh, in preparing um, required legislation to make it happen. So I, I think that's my that's my report. And, uh, and Sam, that that and he also uh, Mr. Chamberlain brought in the Ruby Road uh, uh, experience that he's been having. As in other words, we set the region and met the whole to make sure that the flow of traffic went out of the went out of the of the county uh, pretty smooth. Then. And so, my, he took in all the projects that would be needed and tried to put them all together. And, and Shane and, and Scott, both you can maybe chime in on this. Would it be to our advantage to have a shovel ready or shovel ready projects and, and have us moving forward with the design? To have options available for future financing. So, if we were to look at uh, rolling it in with, with the state's package, wouldn't it be better for us to have designs in hand? Well, Mr. Vice Mayor, Mr. Mayor, and Council, um, uh, the, the short answer is absolutely yes. Um, whether you're considering this creative financing package uh, tied with SR 189 or you're considering, I know Scott, you had mentioned earlier that. Uh, one or maybe more, maybe two or three of these uh, bridges might qualify for some kind of state program in, in terms of uh, getting bridge uh, mitigation taken care of. I was hoping maybe you could shed a little bit of light on what your knowledge is on that and, and how might some of these bridges uh, qualify. Yeah, since we talked, we did look um, of the three bridges. It's, an, it's interesting. Um, Produce Row is documented as, as being built in 1900. But um, it's got a structural sufficiency rating of 86, which means that uh, it's not eligible. Uh, the other two bridges have, are functionally obsolete in their inventory, which means that, not structurally, but that uh, they need improvements like geometry and that sort of stuff. Um, that is a, a competitive program. Um, there is bridge replacement funds, and it's called the ADOT Bridge Replacement Program. It takes a while to get into the queue, and um, that's definitely something we could pursue and, and look at. There, there's one other thing. Um, we could do a load rating on Produce Row, for example, and, and make sure that ADOT's not regurgitating the same uh, structural information from inspection report to inspection report. And, that that's really the case because produce row is served more than its service life. Um, uh, one other thing, um, if you're considering rolling it into an ADOT package, you are probably bringing federal funds into this and, and you both know that it's uh, federal funds don't go quite as far. Um, it does have to go through a NEPA process um, it's a slower process. Uh, there's Davis Bacon wages. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll keep my opinions to myself about federal funds. Um, they, uh, they are there, they're usable. Um, they require getting on the stip. And if you have you know, the support of uh, the state and the governor, I'm sure that uh, you can get them on there. But, but I, either way, sorry to interrupt, yeah. Scott, but, but either way, vice members and council, <laughs> any time that we're in a position as a community to have a shovel-ready project, uh, we're, we're um, leaps and bounds ahead of a lot of different agencies that are just trying to get their, you know, their, their planning done. Uh, we, can, we can compete a lot quicker for any kind of funding opportunity that comes our way, whether it's 
the bridge replacement program where it's some kind of funding opportunity with uh, you know with uh, you know this SR189 option grants you know just it just puts us in a much better position and so I was looking at, at uh, your design cost for all three projects are roughly about a million dollars and if we got over a million dollars in, in, in the overweight fees it would seem to make sense if we should probably move forward with getting the, the design moving along it is close to, to final design and then you can start looking at that right away acquisition and, and permitting because uh, the 404 is not going to be a, a quick process either correct no so, so that's going to what, what's it taking right now two years <coughs> the, it, it's it's gotten better um it's it's 12 months to 18 months now um the the individual you may remember this name robert Dumer has been uh, permitting the southern arizona counties for many years uh he word is he's retiring very soon and uh, we don't know if that's good or bad probably not going to be good so i guess the question is this something that the produce uh, fresh produce would support moving forward with design for these these bridges well, we, we need to ask but the, these three bridges came onto our radar um, uh, from uh, an original correspondence from the fresh produce association as part of their one of their original list of projects to get taken care of so anybody here from the fresh produce <laughs> I am, but I'm not going to speak to the universe <laughs> for um, something I just learned about. I mean, just from the reports. So. But I take notes and I'll take it back. Those are all my questions, Mr. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Uh, the, only, the only other thing that I was kind of uh, uh, caught my interest on, uh, on, the, on the Sonora loop uh, in Smoky, Smoky Lane, uh, if the train. Uh, is blocking uh, that access to Grand Avenue, and the traffic kind of builds back. Is that, does that loop uh, have enough space to let those trucks get into that right lane? Are they going to have a right lane turn aside from the regular driven yeah, so lane? This, is, this may answer your question. Um, so right now, you have one lane that backs up. We are providing a. Uh, exclusive right-hand turn lane, a through lane, and a left turn lane. So uh, the, the traffic will be dis distributed among those three lanes. Um, your, your queuing will, even with a train, will be significantly improved. I'm not saying that, it, that it, we still believe that at times it will <laughs> potentially come back through, um, but um, we don't think that's a problem considering the um, the slow departure and entrance to a roundabout um, if, if the backing up is um, is going through that but it, it's going to be significantly less with these three lanes but, but you have two turning left and one right and the one that's going to be affected more is the, the right lane uh, which is going to be also turning into smoky lane is that an individual uh, is there going to be a uh, a turn lane just to turn there into Smoky Lane, uh, going from east to west, or or is that uh, the so same lane? Or is that the same lane that goes all the way to Grand Avenue? Um, this right now, we are showing a um, essentially a slip lane here with this pork chop. So um, it's not a dedicated right turn lane, but there shouldn't be a problem with with them uh, getting through. And that's something we can refine as well. Right now, we do have the through lane bypassing this, which means that, uh, I mean, if, if it was backed up through here, then the answer would be no. They couldn't get uh, to Smoky Lane without waiting. Um, but then again, it wouldn't happen that they, often. They, could, they, couldn't, they couldn't get there if they were turning left here either. So, right. and, and remember, they're, they're modeling out into the future. So if this thing was constructed uh, tomorrow, it would take us a while problem. to get up to maximum capacity. And, and that's what I'm talking about. Down the road, if, if we get more train traffic, then you know, it might get blocked a little more often. Uh, hopefully not for longer spells, but, but just in case. And just to get it, but, but you're, you're right, it probably with the extra lanes turning into a floor <laughs> and, and people learn how to get around, especially 
you know, I'm thinking about the residents back there, but they'll, they'll probably be training to hold come which we'll do when, uh, whenever the training is blocking. So, I guess we'll <coughs> Well, thank you so much for letting me present to you tonight. That concludes uh, my presentation. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, yep. uh, if I may, so uh, with your all's permission, we have the drafts, let's see here, of the promotional videos. Uh, this process has been going on for how long has it been? Seven or eight months, yeah, I guess. Uh, this all started back in, I think it was March or so. March, February, March. Uh, after you all went to a conference, uh, found out about this uh, opportunity to create six free promotional videos. Um, absolutely no cost to the city of Nogales. Uh, it's been a great opportunity to, uh, to work with CGI. They've been very professional. Uh, at the end of August, we had a videographer come out here. Uh, the mayor comes out as a star, as well as uh, our police chief. So, uh, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> what was it? So, uh, so with, with your permission here, I'd like to go through the videos, uh, let you all see them. Uh, once we get to go ahead, we will uh, call CGI and uh, we'll make them live on our website. And, uh, and they'll be uh, on the website for a few three years. So. Your are waiting. All right, here we go. So, we'll start with the welcome video. And I can't make this any bigger, I'm sorry. This is, this is as big as we can make. Arizona, a safe and thriving international border community that has maintained its small town charm. Its many amenities, annual events, parks, outdoor recreation, and when factored in our sister community of Nogales, Sonora, a regional population of nearly 400,000 residents, make Nogales a great place to live, work, play, and visit. Nogales has a young, hard-working, multicultural, and bilingual population served by award-winning public schools, Cochise Community College, and the University of Arizona. Nogales boasts four international ports, including the $200 million state-of-the-art Mariposa commercial port of entry and the unique Morley port of entry, the only exclusively pedestrian crossing with Mexico. Local businesses thrive thanks to $30 billion of annual international trade, including 4.2 billion pounds of fresh produce over 110 cross-border manufacturing plants, and $500 million in retail sales, mostly to Mexican visitors. Nogales is especially proud of its hometown champions, including 2015 Triple Crown winner Bob Baffert, famous bassist Charles Mingus, and the 2014 Intermediate Little League World Series champions. We invite you to rediscover Nogales today. You're not dancing yet. <laughs> so, so that's the first one that we'll move on Where's to. Where's the chief? Is that the chief? Uh, we'll get to him. Uh, just a reminder, you know, the, the audience for these videos obviously is, is local people uh, who will be going to our website and singing it, but also people in Michigan and, and Calgary and other places you know, who are looking at Nogales. Uh, so, so look at it with those eyes. Of, I've never been to Nogales, but you know, what's there? Well, I almost wanted to go to that magical place. I'm going to ask you where that at. All right, here's the next one. Just an hour south of Tucson on Interstate 19, Nogales, Arizona, is a culturally rich community that maintains its small town charm and Old West ranching traditions. Unique finds include artisanal pottery and copperware, Paul Bond boots, a vibrant downtown with over 100 architecturally interesting shops and dozens of other historically important sites. 
one of Nogales' fine hotels will serve as your base for days of exciting outdoor adventures, including hiking and biking and hunting and fishing in surrounding mountains, as well as Peña Blanca and Parker Canyon Lakes. Go boating in Southern Arizona's premier water destination, Patagonia Lake State Park. Explore the Anza Trail between Tumacacuri National Historical Park and Tubac Presidio State Historic Park, or begin your Arizona trail adventure. Catch a glimpse of the elegant trogan and the other rare birds in Patagonia. Visit a dozen ghost towns, some of John Wayne's film locations, a dozen wineries in Sonoya and Elgin. Go golfing at three area courses, enjoy authentic Mexican food, and cross the border to visit Old Mexico. Come rediscover Nogales today. Sign me up. Nogales residents enjoy a high quality of life with more than a dozen parks, a temperate climate, dramatic summer monsoon, and excellent public schools. Safety is a top priority in Nogales, Arizona. Our crime statistics are consistently below the national average, and our residents enjoy a feeling of safety and security every day thanks to the many hard-working public safety agencies in our community. Nogales commemorates a number of well-attended annual cultural celebrations, including Cinco de Mayo, Independence Day, Christmas Lights Parade, and National Little League Tournaments. Local children participate in summer youth classes at city parks, ranging from swimming and basketball to dancing and art. The free city pool is open every weekday afternoon during the summer, and our splash pad is sure to entertain the kids. Nogales schools and athletic teams consistently rank among some of the best in Arizona, and Cochise Community College and the U of A Santa Cruz provide excellent local higher education opportunities. We invite you to make Nogales your home today. cross-border trade, logistics, and manufacturing. Each year, more than 4.2 billion pounds of fresh Mexican tomatoes, melons, and dozens of other varieties of fresh produce are imported through Nogales on its way to dinner tables throughout North America, making Nogales the winter fresh produce capital of the United States. Since 1910, hundreds of produce-related businesses have called Nogales home, and many more continue to invest millions in new or expanded Nogales operations. Nogales, Arizona, and Nogales, Sonora are home to more than 110 manufacturing plants, assembling a wide variety of electronic, aerospace, medical, and automotive items. Household names like Seattle Sports, Badger Meter, Masterlock, and others employ over 35,000 people in Nogales' largest industry. Our city one-stop shop, Chamber of Commerce, and other community organizations are eager to help you invest in Nogales today. Arizona and Nogales, Sonora, a migratory path for thousands of years for native tribes. By the 17th and 18th centuries, Spanish conquistadors and Franciscan and Jesuit missionaries settled the area and scattered an overland path to Northern California called the Anza Trail. Nogales was founded after the Gadsden Purchase, leading to a ranching and mining rush in the surrounding mountains and high desert grasslands. In 1893, Nogales became Arizona's seventh incorporated city, just a few years after the first connection of American and Mexican trains at the border in Nogales. During World War I and the Mexican Revolution, the U.S. military's garrison swelled to over 10,000 soldiers at Nogales' Camp Little, culminating in two border skirmishes. Santa Cruz County had the most veterans per capita during World War II. The 20th century saw tremendous growth in retail sales, imported fresh Mexican produce, and twin plant cross-border manufacturing. These industries continue to be the lifeblood of today's growing international economy and Nogales' bright future.
Dallas, Arizona's vibrant downtown shopping area is a destination for the nearly 10 million people who cross the border annually in Nogales. Shop downtown at the many locally owned stores still operated by pioneer descendants such as Corey Mercantile and Bracker Department Store. Unique stores sell a wide variety of household goods and clothing and enjoy our local farmer's market each Friday afternoon. When downtown, you must visit the Old City Hall and Primeria Alta Historical Museum, depicting the rich cultural history of the Nogales area. The neoclassic 1904 courthouse is just north on Morley Avenue. Architectural buffs will have a heyday pursuing the many architectural styles prevalent throughout downtown, including Sonoran, Second Empire, Mediterranean, and others. Mexican visitors often make downtown Nogales their first and last stop when visiting Arizona comprising a majority of the annual $500 million of retail sales in Nogales. Along Mariposa Road, other destinations include JCPenney, Kmart, Home Depot, Aeropostale, Ross, Walmart, the Oasis Cinema, and many others. And this last one is kind of a generic. Anybody can live in a neighborhood. But not everyone gets to reside within a true community. Our vast array of community organizations not only provide opportunities to give back, get involved, and come together, they create a sense of pride for our city and continue to help forge the community our residents are proud to call home. Doing better by working together. Community starts here. So, uh, so that's it. Uh, uh, I'd like to make a couple of comments here. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Acosta for sticking with, with me in Washington and getting uh, this uh, project brought down to Nogales. And I would really like to uh, take my hat off to Aaron for do, doing such an exceptional job and, and getting this put together. Without him, we, we couldn't have done it. So uh, we are. Uh, we caught the ball up in D.C. and we threw it at Aaron and he ran with it. He made a touchdown with it. So, you know. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate that. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well that was a, a nice presentation. Uh, kind of uh, made me wish I had a little more time to enjoy my surroundings. <laughs> Is that a, Instead of having to go out of town so much. <laughs> uh, so we go to line six, uh, discussion uh, number six, uh, discussion item uh, number one. And we have discussion and update on possible refinancing of 2006 bonds. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we'll have uh, Sherry and our finance uh, advisor address this topic with you and, and answer any questions you may have. Hope you hit the right button. It's on. It's going to take a little while. It's coming out. Okay. Let me hand out the slides. Okay.
Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is a brief presentation on uh, uh, a couple opportunities that exist for us to try and lower our, our bond debt service. Um, I'd like to introduce all of you to Mr. Michael Vasquez with Ironwood Associates. He's the city's new financial advisor. City Council approved his contract a couple months ago. He's a Douglas, Arizona native and uh, is set up uh, a business where he's serving a lot of local communities down in southern Arizona. So, and he's here to um, addressing any of the uh, additional questions that you might have. So, okay. um, this presentation is about an uh, there are two options that are available to reduce our bond debt service, and uh, we do have a recommendation when we get to uh, the end of this. Okay. Uh, this slide represents the total bond debt service for all of our outstanding bond issuances. The city's outstanding bonds are from the 2006 and 2009 issuances and the refunding that was done a year ago. Uh, you can see that the debt service on the city bonds increases um, almost $440,000 from this fiscal year to the next fiscal year. That's a 24% increase overall. Now, while we have our debt, while the bond debt service is allocated among the five funds shown based on the projects that have been completed with the bond funding, uh, the the increase for each of those funds is, is, is right around 25%, except for the last one, sanitation. So, so we're, seeing, we're, we're looking at a pre pretty significant increase. Um, the city has an opportunity to lower its interest rates for the 2006 bonds. Um, that issuance represents about 26% of the city's outstanding bond principle. <coughs> and uh, there are two different approaches that we can pursue to lower the portion of the city's um, outstanding bonds that are attributable to the 2006 issuance. One is a bank qualified issuance and that's addressed with this slide. The, um, the, the benefits of a bank qualified issuance is that uh, the interest rates generally are lower than uh, traditional refunding. Right now, our, our 2006 bonds carry a 45 to 5% interest rate. Um, according to Mr. Vasquez, the current bank qualified rates are uh, just under 2% to about 3.7%. So you can see that we could see some significant interest savings uh, going this route. Now, one of the um, limitations of a bank qualified issuance is that we can only do $10 million in one calendar year, and that includes both bond and lease debt. Since the 2006 bonds would take up $9.3 million, if we waited to do this until next year, that pretty much eliminates all other opportunity for any new funding for new projects. Of BQ debt. So, um, another limitation, and it's really not a significant one, is that we just have to declare it prior to prior to its issuance. So another opportunity to reduce our debt service is through a traditional refunding. Again, there are a couple um, a couple ways you can do that, but in order to provide us the most flexibility for the future. Uh, the best thing to do would be to do a refunding between this three-month window that's shown up there. Um, because that allows us then to refund again in the future if we would like to, to get, if possible, lower interest rates. Although, the, the, in, as you know, the current interest rates are pretty low as they are. Uh, however, uh, compared to a BQ option, these um, interest rates are a little bit higher. They would be lower than what we're paying now on the bonds, but a little bit higher than what we could get on a bank qualified bond. Um, one of the uh, kind of downsides to um, doing it this way is that if we waited until March, 
for dealing with future rate uncertainty. As you know, you know there have been many discussions at the federal level of rise, raising interest rates. It hasn't occurred yet, but if we know it's going to happen sooner or later. The question is, will it happen before then or not? So our recommendation is to proceed with a bank qualified opportunity in the current calendar year. Um, the payoff would be the same that we have for the current 2006 bonds, which is 2036. Um, what that allows us then is that we could do another bank qualified issuance next year, next calendar year, up to $10 million for new projects or to issue um, a traditional bond issuance next year for new projects. But I just want to caution that the only way we can do um, additional funding, new funding, for new capital projects is if we have enough operating revenue to pay for it because it would add to our operating costs. As you saw on, a, on one of the earlier slides, right now the general fund is paying out of its operating budget $436,000 in um, bond debt service. So, you know, if we weren't paying the bond debt service with these funds, those are the, those are funds that we could um, reallocate to other ongoing costs. But right now they're allocated to the debt service and we're obligated to pay that first. So if we did a new issuance for new money to do additional projects, that, that um, level of debt service would increase. So we would have to have the funding available to do that. And we'll have a better idea of what our ongoing funding is going to be for the upcoming fiscal year, uh, about February or March. But for right now, what we're recommending is that we go forward and at least refinance, in simple terms, the, the 2006 bonds to get a lower interest rate. Mr. Mayor? Yes, so far, so good, but you haven't told us what the savings is going to be. Oh, um, the, <laughs> well, I was going to cover that when we, when we come back for the authorization to proceed, but what, um, I'll, I'll let Mr. Vasquez answer that. He has the numbers in front of us. Mr. Mayor and Council of Peden. Right now on a, a principal amount outstanding of $8. $8.7 million for 2006 bonds. Uh, present value savings is approximately uh, $1.3 million. That's present value. And that's that's not you know doing anything tricky. It's uniform savings. So the savings you're seeing from now until the, the debt is retired is uniform. And I was going to say, isn't that about a 15% savings? Uh, of, refunded, of refunded par, that is about approximately 15% savings. One thing I would caution is that we are at historically lows, and you know, uh, uh, between staff and the financing team, we will do as much as we can to you know hit the market before rates continue to go up. Um, however, you know, there is a number of other issuers across the nation trying to you know get to the same place to hit these rates. So we will likely see some some increase in rates fairly soon. Mr. Vasquez? Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, so in calculating that uh, that present value savings, is it, are all anticipated costs, uh, the you know the cost of the underwriter, the cost of issuance, all that kind of stuff, it's all wrapped in there. So not, I mean, at the bottom line, that's what we're looking to save. Ex excellent question, Mr. Dilley. Uh, the answer is yes. So all, all financing costs, from underwriters to my own fee or any other cost related to the transaction is netted out and the figure that I gave you is the savings that the city would see. Mr. Mayor, it's such a hard decision to save one point. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to move that we move forward with staff recommendation. No second. Okay, we have a motion. Uh, second. Uh, I think we have do we need any more discussion? No. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Um, if I may, I just wanted to show you the timelines. Well, we're, um, we're, we're scheduled to go to the Municipal Development Authority later this month. Then we would come back in December, hopefully for the regularly scheduled December meeting, 
to get authorization for, to proceed. There's a possibility there might have to be a special council meeting to do that authorization, just depending on you know what we can get done in the month of November. Okay. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sherry, when when you guys do plan to come back, would you would you have um, a, a new chart that would show uh, what we would be looking at in all of those different departments for new debt service uh, expense for as we're looking at next year's budget? Uh, yes, we could do an estimate like based an estimate on what on we think. Yeah, uh, uh, what we think the bonds would sell for. Thank you. Yes. <clears throat> Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And on the, under uh, discussion items, uh, number two, uh, we had discussion and possible action on the appointment of a third alternate uh, to both task force. And I put that on, I guess we had on one of the, on one of the sheets, we have three and two alternates, but I think we need to make it all three. <coughs> Be able to make sure that they have no problems when they have their meeting for having that forum and, and, and hopefully more uh, more attendance. Uh, uh, so I had to, I had a name that I wanted to add on, uh, and another one that I was waiting for that was going to respond on the day that I didn't get the call so far. So I'd like to leave that blank for the. I have a name from uh, Mr. Senor. Uh, uh, Beto Fuentes, uh, which has been uh, real active in the community for the tourism board. Um, and, and I'd like to leave the one uh, for the other task force of uh, economic development open for the next, next meeting to bring that meeting up. Uh, do I have a, a motion? Second. Uh, and second. All those in favor, say no, say no. Aye. 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 Motion carried. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Consent agenda. Yeah, we're starting to get a move on here. Mr. Mayor, I apologize. She needs a, a clarification on who made the motion and second. Motion and second to. Thank you. At that one? Yes, sir. Thank you. And on the number seven, consent agenda, well, we only have one. So I'll just go ahead and read it. Eight, approval of mayor and city council, regular session, minutes, Wednesday, October 2015. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. And, uh, second. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, I guess now we go to the order. Uh, and we have number one, uh, the considered possible action of uh, order 25 2015-2015-11-089. In order of the Council of the City of Nogales, Arizona, amending the City of Nogales Personnel Manual, Chapter 11, regarding eligibility, termination, and payment of premiums in connection with retiree city health and benefits. And I guess that's one of the things that we got some input tonight. But I also noticed that on that order number, you have a you have a different order number on, uh, on, on the same um, the hard copy of the information. Uh, you have it as a, uh, uh, I don't know if, uh, let, me, let me see the order number here. It doesn't match up with this one. Uh, In the staff report? Well, uh, let me get to the I think it's in here. Mr. Okay. One possibility name. for the for the discrepancy is that this item was scheduled to be in front of you at your last month's action meeting and was tabled uh, to uh, to tonight's meeting. Well, the, 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 well, aside, I guess what happened on this, uh, what I noticed is I, from the last uh, study session, I started getting some feedback from some of the folks that were not notified. Uh, I, I remember that we had mentioned uh, on previous uh, in a previous study session, not the last one, that uh, whenever we got together, there were certain members that were going to be notified, and they were going to be part of the, the loop, I guess, or part of, of the discussion and whatnot. And, and one of the things that we don't want to do is 
is leave uh, people out here feeling uncomfortable that they weren't uh, uh, notified or they weren't uh, quite informed. Uh, I think what's going to happen eventually is, is going to happen. We're going to we have to fine tune it a little. We're going to fine tune it. But at this time, I'd like to table this uh, this order for uh, for uh, just uh, for further information on the people that are concerned. Have another study session. Make sure that we notify everyone, get them all together, and then take it from there. Uh, do I have a motion? So second. 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 Okay. Uh, uh, Any discussion? Uh, yeah. Could, uh, well, this is, this has been dragging for a long, long time. And being that we're going to do the bond debt service and all that, we should we should get this taken care of as soon as possible. Uh, notify who you, you know who we're going to notify and and get this done as quickly as possible because it's been going on for quite a while. Uh, or all the retirees can come in and and they can uh, or or if we could do a a, a draft of, of a document to give to the retirees so everybody can read it. And, uh, and and get it done as soon as possible because it, the time is of the essence here with our debt uh, bond debt service and the refinance and and the government uh, the federal government uh, you know with the regulations and, and all that on, on us to do something about that uh, that debt we have uh, the liability issue so I I think we should get everybody all the stakeholders of. Uh, involved as soon as possible and get it done. <coughs> Thank you, Councilman. That's a good point, and I think that's what we're going <coughs> to... We're going to give a staff on that. Uh, and thank you for bringing that up. That we need to get this done as soon as possible. I'm sure that the people involved want to hear from us as soon as possible also. So, so we're going to get that on, on the radar as quick as, as quick as we can. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes. We have a unique opportunity tonight to have our finance advisor here with us. Maybe not to change the decision tonight to table, but to add emphasis on on uh, the the importance of getting this back in front of you guys as soon as possible. Maybe he could come forward and at least talk to us just for a, a couple of minutes on why we're even here tonight. Why do we even need to be considering something like this? And what does it mean to us if we continue to delay or even not take action in some form or fashion? So I, I thought that might be a good opportunity since he's here with us tonight. Mr. Mayor, just to follow up on Shane's suggestion, and I asked Sherry this question, is, is uh, if it is currently a, an audit finding or a potential to be an audit finding, and if so, how would that impact our, our future financing uh, scenarios that we're looking at? So if I have both Sherry and uh, Mr. Vasquez address whether it would be a, an audit finding and, and the impact an audit finding would have on our finance. Excuse me, uh, could it be an audit finding? I, I think the answer is definitely yes. Uh, especially if the um, OPEP, the, the liability amount, which was 40 million in the last study, if that continues to grow, which is, which is what it is projected to do, given the fact that health insurance costs continue to grow. So I think if our auditors saw that it continued to go up, um, that they would raise a red flag. I can't, I can't say that they definitely would, but I would think that they would certainly talk to us about that. So. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. Manager, um, I believe the question to me is, is how would this affect the, or potentially affect the city's rating, correct? So, as, as you know, the OPEP liability isn't necessarily part of the city's excise tax rating. However, it is a part, and is indicative of you know, the city's overall health. So if, if the city was to you know, keep this OPEP liability or was to grow, could it negatively impact the city's rating? It could. If the city was to reduce um, the liability over you know, a certain you know, period of time, could it positively impact the, the rating? Potentially, but not likely. It's, it's become an increasing concern in all municipal issuances. And again, although it's not necessarily part of the, the credit 
uh, bond investors and bond purchasers certainly do look for the OPEP section to see if the, the city is, you know, has it under control. Well, thank, thank you very much. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the things that was in the back of our minds, and it's uh, glad that everybody gets uh, to hear that because nowadays uh, it seems like any, any, anything affects the, the, the credit. Uh, so we, we got to make sure that we, we stay within those limits also. But we're going to have to, uh, I think uh, staff's going to have to work uh, and get get this done in the, within the next, uh, hopefully, couple of weeks, uh, have a meeting with, with our I guess employees or retirees and, and employees too because they're they're involved in it and and anybody else that wants to, to be involved uh, and, and hopefully we'll bring all this out on the table and we'll be able to, to, to final, finalize it and, and put it on the agenda in the next meeting. Mr. Mayor, one of the, if I can just draw us back real quick, uh, th this is, I, I believe the We've had three previous study sessions with the council where the, where the OPEB liability recommendations had come before you for consideration. Um, tonight makes uh, what I count by my, my by my recollection the fourth time that it's been in front of you. One of the one of the directions that you gave us um, uh, under the concern that we don't have an important stakeholder represented in the dialogue uh, was to include. Um, somebody recommended to us from the uh, from the retiree group to actually sit on the on the board and participate in those discussions um, that happened uh, and the recommendation from that group is what you're considering tonight um, in what way do you want i just want to make sure that we're managing your expectation um, what way would you like us to proceed um, after having had the OPEB liability committee meet as often as it did and have those recommendations come to you. We have now four times that this has been in front of you as a city council. Each one of those times has been publicly noticed. It's been put on, you know, around, around. So, I just would you like us to send a memo to the, you know, to all of the retirees themselves and let them know the date and time that this will be back in front of you for consideration. I just want well, to make sure I'm managing. Well, I think that would be. That would, that would work uh, pretty well if we did send a memo out to them. I, I don't think that would be a hard thing to do. Nope. Nope. And and that way uh, they can uh, they can probably even send some to the people that were involved in, in it mm -hmm. and get the, the date and time and we'll be able to finalize something at that time. Uh, so we can put this on the agenda, get, get it taken care of, and continue forward. But we need to make sure that everybody knows what's going on, let them have, uh, be able to voice their opinions, uh, get some input. Uh, is there something that we need to fine tune? Because I, I saw a couple of things that that uh, we talked about the last study session that was supposed to be in place. They weren't, they weren't there. So we're going to need to what's the discuss system? those things. Uh, Just want to make sure you all assured me that, uh, that we were going to have an actuary study in between uh, the next two years. And there's nothing here about it. it's more of a, you're dictating or you're stating that a certain year, certain years this is going to happen, going beyond that without taking into account that, uh, that study. Mayor, in the order itself, you are ordering the whole study between the years that it's being. Right, adopted. right. But, but we were supposed to stop after the second year when we were at 50 50 and be able to see. Where we were going to go from there. Well, well based on the way the, the way the way the, the way it reads, it doesn't seem to state that. Now maybe I'm misinterpreting it, but we'll get to down and, and, and go over that. But I think that's what we need to do, and that's why we have this motion right now on, 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 the, on the table uh, to to give us this time to get together and be able to finalize it. So all those in favor? Uh, yes, Mayor. I'd like to make a comment. Yes, sir. I think that one of the things that was brought up tonight, and I think uh, Sheriff Estrada brought it up, there are things going around. And uh, I was contacted my, myself. And I think one of the things that we need to do is, is, is to make it clear. Uh, for that matter, in the last council meeting that we had, 
I think the insurance agents that came up, especially the last one that came up, had some really good points. And actually, she did a synopsis that was really clear. And I, I think that, that the officers or any of the re retirees need to be here and hear those, those comments. Uh, I think that what we need to do is inevitable. We need to do something. So if the re retirees uh, have um, concerns, if they want to be heard, I think that we do need to, to get together. Uh, we need to finalize a, a decision. But the city has a liability. We, we need to make that very clear. Uh, the other thing that, that I think that needs to be a uh, cleared up is that we need to make a decision and we need to make it soon. So whatever you're going to handle, um, Shane, Mr. Dilling, we need to do it quickly. And, and the word needs to be out there. They, they need to come in with some type of, of solution. I don't know whatever their concerns are. But we need to make a decision. It, it sounds like that, uh, I, again, what I'm hearing, and I just need your clarification, it sounds like um, I'll get the information out to the retiree group. Mm -hmm. uh, what I'm thinking about doing is just taking the staff summary report, taking the proposed change to the personnel manual, including a memo on it, and making sure that every retiree has a copy of that, uh, or at least doing what I can to get that out into, into, their, mm -hmm. into their hands. Um, but if you're looking for uh, an opportunity or venue to take that input and then and then modify what's being what's in front of you tonight, that's probably better done in, in some form of a study session mm -hmm. and not what's in you know not not a, a business meeting uh, like tonight. Um, tonight we're we're here tonight because all the work that's been done up to this point has kind of just kind of a, a natural progression of things, but. If we need to take a step back to have that discussion, I just want to make sure I'm managing the expectation. Uh, we can we can get it out and we'll do it really soon, and then we'll schedule a study session where uh, that will be on the memo so people know when when that's going to happen. Um, and if they want to input, they're welcome to come and, and engage the council on on what their concerns are. Um, but you've had I just want to remind you you've had an OPEB liability committee that's not comprised of, uh, you know, it's a kind of a cross section, it has some outside input, we had the retirees sitting on there, um, coming forward to you with recommendations on how to solve um, a, a piece of this problem. And uh, that's kind of where we sit tonight. And, and we've been working on this, all, I mean, we're pushing almost almost two years. I mean, we're, we're, we're almost about, there, we're almost about, there. So I'm just, we're I'm almost just, there. One more month and we won't be there. Mayor, uh, Mayor, 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 Mayor. Uh, yes, uh, go ahead, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, come up to the podium and just state your name and address. Good evening, Mayor, Council, uh, retirees that are out there. Um, I am on the committee on that OPEP. I only attended one meeting. Uh, I replaced another retiree that was here. I also brought it up to the members that were here that there's only one retiree, and that was me I'm from the fire department. Nobody from public works, nobody from law enforcement. And I brought it up at, the, at that meeting that, you know, we need to include the other retirees, not just one, and have him speak on behalf of all the retirees. I didn't think that was fair, but then again, I replaced another retiree on the committee. I suggested that we include somebody from public works, police, fire, and maybe a staff member from up here that recently retired or is a retiree. But again, I agree that we need to include more people if there needs to be more study sessions, so be it so that everybody is on the same page. I understand there's necessities. I understand that uh, there's issues with budgets. I've been there and I've done that. But again, we need to protect our retirees and future retirees because I brought it up at the meeting at the same time that my neighbor is a retiree from Public Works, but he is 
attending to his wife's needs 24 7. and if we're going to start changing uh benefits especially like the sheriff said mr Stada, we need to include those people because they're not paid as well unfortunately as other people in other departments they are the biggest stakeholders as well mm -hmm. so we need to include everybody and again i reiterate we need to have more study sessions and as long as it takes so everybody is educated on the changes that have to be made because we know they're going to get made but if everybody has a voice and opinion then every i believe everybody would be happy was anybody excluded or was this I have committee no just made up? I have no idea. I have or no idea. Like, meeting. like if a <laughs> retiree wanted to attend, would, would they be excluded? I have no idea. They, so they could go. I mean, you could have been appointed, but at the same time, you could have gone and represented yourself. Is that correct? Uh, I, when I was asked to... I think Sheriff is right. Yeah. Maybe I can answer that question. Okay. Uh, and I brought it up in December of last year, I think it was. There was no stakeholder included in this committee. And that's mm -hmm. when I made a request uh, that they include somebody. And they took that under advisement. And that's when uh, Mr. Rodriguez was included. But at no time was a stakeholder included mm -hmm. from the retirees at all. And, and I thought that wasn't fair because there was no representation there. So the answer to your question is there were stakeholder was never considered mm -hmm. at all until after and, and this was the previous administration is yeah, that correct and, and no right correct and the previous administration mm -hmm. agreed to to put everything on hold and get somebody on, on the committee um mm -hmm. the thing about it the whole issue here has been lack of communication <coughs> uh, they haven't been advised uh, they're in the dark about it the only time we hear about anything is when it, it becomes an agenda item mm -hmm. and like i mentioned the last time in december I was notified the day before because nobody knew anything about it. Uh, this time around, I was notified yesterday because somebody saw it in the post office. So there's a lack of communication between the city and the staff and, and the retirees. And not only that, but I think with the employees, the whole employees of the city of Nogales, because they all have a, a stake in this as well, whether they're going to be eligible at some time or whether they're not. So I think they're worried about that as well. So it's not just a retiree issue, it's also an issue of the people that are currently working with the city. I hope that, that answers your question. Yes, it does, and it does affect the sure. the employees right now because their premiums are going to go up. Is that correct? So yeah, everybody has a stake, and I agree with you. I think that it's a communication situation at at this point. But you know, I came tonight ready to vote. I don't know if you all were going to like it or not. But uh, I was ready to vote. Uh, I know what the city needs to do at the same time. So I'm willing to, to hear you guys out, but we need to make a decision. And that communication has to, the communication lines have to open up, and we have to make a decision. We'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. thank, thank you, Tom. Thank, thank you. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much where we're at, and I, I think we, I think all the, uh, all the homework and all the work that's been done uh, on this is is going to come out and, and hopefully it'll filter through to everyone and, and uh, we'll be able to work together to, to pick that solution that will best that'll work for the whole community and the city uh, and the employees of course <laughs> so uh so i guess uh we're we're we've had enough discussion uh let's, let's uh, put it on a vote all those in favor of Continuing the study session. Uh, no, no, we didn't vote on it. We never voted on it. We, we just had a first and a second, didn't we? Yeah, but, but the motion is just the table. It's not, the table. Not, not oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I got, see, we get carried away when we start talking too much. Okay. So we have a motion uh, a motion to table and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Motion to table. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. And, and thank you all for. Coming over and, and letting us know how you feel. Um, next, next item, number two. Uh, I guess we have uh, consideration and possible action of order. Doesn't have the order number. 
Let me see. Let me look at the. Let me look at another one here. Maybe we have one. I guess it's a, let me look at it. Yeah, this is probably one. Of, not a draft, but I guess it didn't have the order on here either. Okay. Uh, consideration of possible action of order 2015-11-090. In order of the Council of the City of Nogales, Arizona, transferring bond proceeds from the water fund to the capital improvement fund to complete park improvements included in the Council adopt their fiscal year 2016 budget. Mr. Mayor, this is in large part a housekeeping item. Uh, it's similar to two previous items that you've done uh, on previous agendas uh, where we're moving um, uh, bond obligations from your from your capital bond uh, to the appropriate department so that they're paying the right principal and interest um, and this is all reflective of past council uh, action so this is just a, a, a housekeeping venture I can have Sherry come up to express the, the details of it but it's by a large part that house mayor I'll second Okay. Uh, any discussion? Okay. All those uh, in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> Consideration and possible action of Order 2015-11-091. Do we have a motion to approve? I'm recommending the table this one. You want to tell? Oh, this is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we had hoped to have a representative of the county here tonight to uh, actually be available to answer any questions you might have. This is a bill that we received from the county tied to Animal Control Services as their reconciliation of uh, and closing out their books from last fiscal year. Uh, you remember last fiscal year there was uh, a big issue with the rabies, out rabies outbreak with, uh, you know, with skunks and things across the, the county. Uh, they incurred uh, a significant amount of overtime. Uh, they also uh, was in. Were, they were also in need of, of uh, replacing one of their their vehicles. Um, so altogether, they they went over their annual operating budget by over one hundred sixty thousand dollars. Our co contract with them is based off of off of actuals, and uh, and so we're 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 obligated fifty percent of that. Wanted to make sure we had a county rep here to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, we have solicited the county. To get some information, um, I don't know if Sherry's in a position to answer that, but honestly, we'd really like to have a county rep here to do that. They indicated that they were not able to come tonight, and so I'm recommending that we table this until we can have that uh, that kind of discussion. Okay, let me uh, go so through that. that uh, we'll in and and <laughs> the request is to table. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a first and second. <laughs> All those in favor, in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Table. Uh, number four. Consideration and possible action of order 2015-11-092. Uh, and that's an order of the Council of the City of Nogales approving a professional service agreement with the Gallus Chamber of Commerce. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Okay. Uh, Mayor, it's not ready to discuss. Oh, it's okay. Just a discussion? Yeah, just a discussion. Yeah, discussion, and depending on what you decide, but the order before you is, is the form of the, uh, the contract, but there's provisions in it that the council has to decide uh, in connection with the amounts, the terms, so on. I've provided you guys copies of those. So. Okay. So then uh, we'll go ahead and uh, and open it for uh, for discussion. I'm just looking for the Mayor Andrew represent. Maybe you should. Mayor, can legal clarify what the terms? What issue. you what the issues are? Sure. In, in the contract that that I gave you, the the issues that need to be resolved or, or negotiated. Uh, would be uh, number one that the scope of services, but I think those are pretty clear. So I don't think there's going to be uh, a whole lot of discussion on that. Um, you're going to have to decide uh, when these progress reports, the the, the uh, contract provides for progress reports to be given to the council, and you'll have to decide how, how often you want those. Um, so it's 1.9. One. Uh, yeah, 1.9 of the contract. Uh, section 4 
would be the compensation. The council's going to have to decide how much you're going to uh, provide the chamber for the services that are reflected in, in section 1.0, the scope of services, and how uh, those payments are going to be paid, uh, and um, what the uh, for what purpose those funds can be utilized. Um, which is 4.2, right? Which is 4.2. It's all under 4. Okay. And then finally, uh, you're going to have to decide uh, what, what is the term of the contract. Uh, and, and that is in section 5.3. So uh, those are the items that have still need to be resolved uh, with, with the council and the chamber. Um, but we sat with him and went over the rest of it. It was a very productive meeting. And we got through all everything else except those terms because those are terms that, that belong to the council. And so, Mr. Mayor, to review the the term, it, it would be an annual, or we could make it. Up. Yeah, yeah, probably the the two alternatives at this point would either be an annual contract from the day it's adopted to uh, for a year's period, or the date of adoption to the end of our fiscal year. Probably the two options that you're going to be looking at. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, on that particular one, we can probably kick it out pretty quickly if we just, I, I would recommend that we tie all of our contracts that have actual dollars coming out from the city to our, our fiscal year, because we go through a budget process, you talk about that, and you allocate resources per the budget. So if a, if a contract follows our fiscal year, it's a lot easier to administer, administer for staff and for everybody involved. So. I would recommend that the contract be tied to a fiscal year, and then we can kick that one out of the way and, and move into other uh, other items that we need to talk about. So you're talking about item 5.3? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's... Okay, so that would be from November 15th, I'm sorry. July. From November 15th through July 15th? July. I don't or know about July. the ability to be retro on this, but it would end June 30th. June 16th. June. It, it, it would be <coughs> whenever it's signed. Okay. But it would yeah. end the end of this fiscal year. The end of June. Start again. The, the, end end of June. June. the end of June. The end of June. Mr. Mayor, and just for, for my edification, <coughs> the monthly or the reports, how, how often were was the chamber providing reports? Were they monthly, quarterly, or? Quarterly? They were quarterly, but that's when it was the whole year contract. So it, um, here, it may not make sense to do it quarterly if we're only talking uh, six months of a contract. So, I mean, that's what you have to decide. Well, we it could be two months. In previous contracts, um, uh, the, uh, the distribution of the city's contribution was made contingent on that report coming back to you as a city council. So uh, that was that was the trigger. They'd make their report. Um, we would, as staff, be prepared that night to you know to hand them a check for you know for the uh, for the upcoming uh, quarter or the previous quarter. I can't remember how it was, but it was tied to that. Um, uh, and that was, I guess, at, at the time, out of you know concern, they just wanted to uh, the council, the previous administration wanted to you know make sure that. Um, you know that the chamber was utilizing those funds for you know, whatever was designated in the contract at the time. So semi-annually would be fine. Yeah, that's up to you. Semi-annually, we would still do monthly installations. Um, they would have a, a semi-annual mm -hmm. obligation to report back to the council. But keep in mind, if you're going to terminate it at the end of the fiscal year. We're only talking about seven months, so when do you want the report? In the next seven months, how, when do you want the report? The project. In between, in between, there you go. March. March? March. March. So, I mean, I mean, whatever. I mean, we could, like, if we could do it right at midpoint. Yeah. Uh, March. A month. Is it, is it so, March? March? It's March. It's March. Close. Uh, close. Yeah. Close. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get on the calendar and tell you if it's midpoint, I'll, I'll figure it out. 
So you want to give us the date now? I'm sorry, you're there. Yeah. Oh, Marsh, it's not so okay. Yeah, I know you're looking at that. I was just, I was just trying, to, trying to find the agreement. <laughs> <laughs> March 1. Uh -huh. We'll, we'll do. One. have one report, March well, 1. Well, the first meeting in March. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. The first council meeting. First council meeting. Yeah, that was the easy one. So, so then the term would be when it's signed mm -hmm. until the end of the fiscal year. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. And they're providing monthly, or uh, we're, we're compensating a monthly. On a monthly basis. Is that correct? Monthly basis. I think so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then um, monthly. Um, I have, I have then the, the amount, and then look at the scope of services if that's satisfactory. And, and look at uh, and when you determine the amount. Uh, keep in mind that that under section uh, section three, that includes the city's membership uh, mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the chamber. So I, think, I think we got through all the easy ones. Now, now mm -hmm. the one that's come up. Well, I think under four point two, this came up in a discussion I had with with Shane on. 4.2 B fixed costs. But when we talked to the chamber, uh, Joe, the discussion of um, salaries, uh, it was at least my impression or understanding that salaries were not a fixed cost. But in talking with Shane, it, that's his understanding of a, of a fixed cost is, is salary. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in previous contracts, uh, I don't know accounting wise whether salaries are included in fixed costs. But in previous contracts, we've made the distinction between fixed cost and salary. So we did that by stating the expectation of the city that the use of these contributions for salaries would be would be a short-term thing. And that's how you pulled it out. That's what you're referring to. Right, right. So, so in specific questions, the way we've written it, and I think the way um, we, we talked to to uh, Ms. Ainsa about this that fixed salaries were not included in fixed costs. So the way question. it's written, they yes, they would be able to use it for salary. I, I would recommend the, the clarification on that because I, I think it could be read uh, a, a couple of different ways. If you know, if if the intent is for your the city's contribution to be used for salary or a portion of it. Uh, then, then I think it ought to be just specifically called out in there that that's okay because uh, I, I can assure you that there, there are there are eyes that would read that that would say fixed cost. If you have an employee and they're working for you, you have to pay that employee. So you know it's uh, you know there's there could be some gray and confusion in how that's in how that's termed. So if it's the intent to use it for salaries, then let's just make sure that it's clearly articulated that that's an okay use. Of, of the of the contribution, I, I could change it however you want. You know, um, just tell me what so they, what it's okay to be used for and what it's not okay to be used for, and I'll clarify. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I was under the understanding that it was not for salaries. I, that's up to you. That's a decision you have to make. Well, but, it, but is it legal? Yes, yes, oh, I, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. that was, that was, that's our concern of what's legal and what's not. Well, yeah. Yeah. So then another point, it was 50 50, 50 like people use it for tellers, and 50 for promotional. Uh, uh, in, in the previous agreement, <coughs> the council allowed the, the chamber to use 50% of that for salary. But, but, but they did it the other way around. They did. 50%, not less than 50%, was going to be devoted to promotional materials and activities and so on. And then the remainder was so presumably. But, used but it was sunset course. too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the I mean but, but the point is they'd let them use it. Yeah. So it's up but to you whether yes, Mayor, no, percentage. I was reading in, on the old contract and it says very clearly allocation for payment of wages is not intended to be permanent. It was something just. For meanwhile, and it's right that was, That's the old time. Yeah. yeah. So now, now we're working on a new one. Uh, so why should they use it for salary when we need it for something else? I mean, uh, I don't see Mayor, a need for Mr. paying Mayor, salary. Mayor, if, if you can, let's put it this way. If you, you have a business going and somebody gives you $10 uh, for the business, I mean, are uh, you going to do the business 
carry on the business and you're not going to get paid for it. I mean, you're doing the work for this individual who gives you a $10, but you cannot use it to pay yourself when you're doing the work. So no, well, does it make any sense if we go no, back we're, to the 50 50? I, I believe we're working to see where we're going to end up with this new contract. Can I answer that one? Okay. I mean, <laughs> no. The, the point is that what, what the city is paying is to promote tourism, not to pay salaries. They have their own uh, way to pay the salary. I mean, I, I think it's, it's not uh, from the money that we're giving them. Government. They have the membership. I, I think mostly it's under the, the state guidelines, are isn't it? Tourist center? No, the, the tourist center has to be operated pursuant to state guidelines. Okay. But it doesn't say, doesn't address the issue. No, that's, that's, and that's where we get represented, isn't it? When, uh, they, uh, a tourist walk in and want to know about the galleries and, and they right. attend them with the literature and information and everything else that they but, provide. Well, that's part of it, but, but the scope of services is a lot more detailed than just that. Right, right, they, they right. No, but is that, is that the part that we help them out to pay for somebody to land that center? Mr. Mr. Mayor, okay. if we go back to, the, I guess, the language that was in place, that's not, a, not less than X percent is going to go for promotion, uh, and it's, a, it's an annual contract, we can, and we're going to be getting a report, we can look, look at it at that time and make a determination of whether or not we want to continue to fund at that level or, or not. Yeah. If they're not doing what, what we think they ought to be doing, that's what we can say. Terminate. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Or, 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 the, or, the or modify it at that point and say, well, this is what we want to do now. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite a, so so you, you want to allow the use of the money for salaries but cap it at a certain percentage? 50, that what yeah. 50, 50. 50%, not more than 50% we use for salary. Right. Okay, I can do that. Question? Question? Yes, I come from you. Uh, on, on scope of services, will, will they be uh, contracting with the state of Arizona Department of Tourism on the co-op advertising that we were doing? Uh, with, would that be part of their scope of service? If, you know, depending on the... On contract as we were doing uh, we as that type was doing they were they were paying uh, 7500 to uh, the state department of tourism for co-op advertising in the whole state of arizona and in the whole state of sonora mexico so is that be part of the deal or i i know i i don't think that's a, a revolving type program i think there's a it's an annual opportunity, and you have to make your application at a certain time to get considered for you know for that year. Um, I think we're well past that. Uh, Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong on that, right. but we're well past that window of opportunity. So that particular seventy-five hundred dollars um, is kind of sitting out here. Um, it was intended to be used for that program, based off of the direction the council made in, in adopting the budget. That the, the council kind of looked to the chamber to do that. Um, but we know that for for probably a lot of a lot of different reasons uh, we missed that window of opportunity. Um, it won't show itself again this fiscal year, so that's kind of out there. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in June is when it is. Oh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I mean that that's covered in, in the agreement under 1.11 that they will work in collaboration with the Office of Tourism Governors, Tourism Advisory Council, and other. Pennies promoting the city, and, and I think if we had this tourism task force, and if they they look at that, and you're going to be staffing that, correct? Correct. And if, if that <coughs> program comes up, that's something that you can present to that task force, and, and they can come and recommend that, that whatever funding be allocated for something like that and bring it back. I think that would fall under the marketing plan director from the council. Any, any more questions on the council? So, so that seventy five hundred would be left kind of on the table for your your task force to make a recommendation <coughs> on at the appropriate time. I don't think we should limit it. I mean, it, it, it may be less, maybe more. Who knows what? what well, we per the budget, we have a kind of a finite amount of money tied to these types of efforts. So, not to not to not to say it couldn't increase, but right now we're kind of in my mind we're kind of working within that you know within that. Uh, how much are we giving the, the chamber right now? Zero right now. 
No, no, I mean, how much? B budgeted, yeah. budgeted, there was, there was a, a, an annual membership fee of 6,500. Mm -hmm. There was the previous um, earmark from the, uh, the council of 18,500 uh, that would go towards supporting the tourism and, uh, and uh, I guess, I guess tourism really. Um, and then, uh, and then this last budget year, so that's kind of history, this last budget year, you added to that uh, the, the $20,000 that was in the general fund. Um, you put that to the chamber, which included that $7,500 uh, piece for the AOT grant. The reallocation of that $7,500. So it's totals 40, $45,000. So if we were just to plug that amount in. I'll make a motion to put that amount in for the chair. Before, before we get to the second, um, keep in mind that what we we have to get in order to, 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 to comply with the new legal requirements, we, what we dish out, we're supposed to get back in value. And, and we were going to do 45 for a whole year and now we're only talking about six months. You have to take that into consideration. You prorate it up. No, well, yeah, yeah. You know, something like that. However, you so it's going to be monthly. So it's going to be up. monthly. So, but the, you have to take that into consideration when you get the total amount when you decide what the total amount is. Well, because we're, we're not starting for the whole year. We can yeah. prorate that. Yeah. Whenever the contract is signed, it'll be prorated to that. Okay. Is that, a, is that a motion? Well, I mean, we probably need to move to everything, right? Um, hold on. Uh, let, me, let me just go through and make sure we covered everything. Can you read all the things? That <laughs> sure. <laughs> we're we're going to, the, the reports, uh, there'll, there'll be a, re, a, a report, the uh, first uh, meeting in March, uh, and then I'm going to suggest that we do a, a meeting after uh, the first meeting after the termination of the contract, so we have two. Okay. Um, then uh, the the number will be forty five thousand dollars prorated, um, and then uh, payments uh, monthly payments. That amount, uh, not more than fifty percent of the amount allocated, then can can be used for for salaries. Um, They'll not be used for utilities or other fixed costs. Is that right? Okay. Um, and the term of the contract will be as soon as it's signed, and it will end the fiscal year. Uh, I think that's all of it. If that's such a motion, yeah. If you want, okay. If you can do it in. Uh, so move, and, and, and then I will prepare the contract in accordance with that motion, and then get it out for signatures. Okay. We have a motion, a second. second. Uh, we have plenty of discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Uh, I think that's faster than bringing it back again. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, let's go back now and then. And we are ordinances. Ordinances. Okay, number nine. Uh, nine one. Consideration and possible action of ordinance zero two zero one five dash one zero dash zero zero four. Before you <laughs> before you move to to, to uh, approve that, I would request a motion to amend that uh, ordinance by striking the designation paragraph A and striking subsection B of section point uh, or 10-1, all of it. Dash one. Because Someone, that, that was put in twice. I'll second that. Okay. okay, so moved. Okay. Now hold okay. on. The, on the all, those in, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That, was that was the motion to amend. So now we need the, now motion, we need the motion to yeah. approve the ordinance. Okay. So we'll okay, second. we have a second. 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 All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And, and since, one more, <laughs> since we have a unanimous approval, 
Can we have a motion to waive the second reading of the ordinance? <coughs> so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Set. Set. Aye. The second one is easy. Okay. <laughs> Consideration and possible action of uh, ordinance 02015 11 005. And uh, I, I guess uh, that we have a so on, Mayor. second motion to approve. Uh, any discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. And on this one also, may I have a motion to waive the second reading? So moved. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> okay. Carry. Now, uh, number 10. We go to the second session. I guess, uh, <laughs> It'll be pretty short. Okay. I'll give you an update. I'm going to have to use Robin's dinner. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no executive session then. We'll have a, I don't know how long, uh, uh, but we'll, we'll get a couple of minutes break in case we'll Oh, I'm so sorry, one second. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. Back and continuing the regular session of our regular meeting and we have uh, we have the city manager's report mr. mayor uh, quickly we, uh, we did receive bids for the comp study uh, remember we went out nationally uh, 14 different vendors uh, out to 14 different vendors we received three quotes um, we'll be working with legal to uh, bring uh, the, uh, uh, the the qualified quotes back to you for consideration uh, we're shooting for your December meeting. Um, already updated you on the meeting with the governor last week. Uh, very productive. Uh, remember, Veterans Day is coming up, November 11th. Uh, the holiday parade planning uh, is already underway. Mary, you're taking the lead with that. And, uh, my staff is telling me that the discussions are, are running real smooth. And I, I just want to be able to make, uh, invite the whole council, uh, whoever wants to participate, uh, Get involved in the in the meetings. It's uh, every Monday right after usually the directors the directors meeting mm -hmm. right here at the, the chamber around 11:30 right here on Monday. Um, task forces, your your uh, tourism and your economic development task force groups. Uh, the agendas are already prepared and they're planning to meet uh, the tourism group November 10th and the economic group uh, November 9th. Um, and then uh, the it looks like the joint meeting between the city council and uh, and um, the board of supervisors is shaking out to be December 9th. So we'll we'll send that we'll is, send is that it November or December for the for the, the joint task meeting. forces. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, so task forces. So economic development task force is is uh, is scheduled right now to be November 9th at 3 p.m. and tourism November 10th at 10 p.m. Okay. I'm not saying here till 10 p.m. <laughs> sorry, 10 a.m. Oh, my bad. My bad. I have written a.m. Sorry, I don't 10 know why. 10 a.m. That is so uh, late. 10 a.m. is the tourism, right? Tourism, right. November 10th, 10 a.m. Economic development, November 9th, 3 p.m. I mean, oh, okay. okay. And then again, we're sending the date to the county for your joint meeting, December 9th. Okay, Wednesday, December 9th. We'll let you know how that shakes out. And that concludes my update. Thank you. What are the times from? November 10th at 10 a.m. And November 9th is 8 p.m. And November 9th is uh, uh, economic development and tourism. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And they'll, and they'll uh, notify all the new members and everything, uh, including Mr. Fuentes. Uh, Absolutely. I already did, Mr. Mayor. Oh, Talk to him tonight. oh great. Thank you. So uh, we're down almost to the Y here uh, on um, future agenda items. Uh, I got one. Uh, I'd like to give uh, you guys all got your packet on our on our trip to Mexico City. So I'd like to uh, you know with Aaron's help uh, 
give a briefing and follow-ups we had from the from the trip itself, so so we can uh, further explain what's going on with with our uh, contacts in Mexico City, Pro Mexico, and Phoenix, and and you know, so everybody can be aware of what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Kind of a discussion, item. a discussion, yeah, okay. just for discussion and a briefing for uh, for the general public to, to see that we are doing something. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'd like an update on the rentals of city-owned properties. We also went to that uh, Arizona Sonora Commission yesterday, you know. And, and uh, but you want an update? No, no, because I went to the, to oh. get out, to see what out there. Oh, oh, just to mention, okay, well, uh, the progress that we're, yeah, the progress, I guess, are done. It, it, it is, uh, it is amazing how everybody's supporting the region, the support we're getting throughout the whole state. Not only from this southern region, but we're also getting that from throughout the state in the northern region, which is which is pretty amazing that that they're saving us. Uh, I mean, they can see the value of, uh, of the crossing here in Nogales and working with Mexico. So that's, that's really nice to, to have that support. And I guess, I guess we'll, we'll do an update. Uh, any, anything else on your yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, there's some things that I would like to know as far as the process with the decorations that take for for Christmas, for Veterans Day. For example, I've been getting a lot of calls with the flags around the city. As a matter of fact, after I received some, some calls, I started going around the city myself. There are flags which I think would be very disrespectful with, with Veterans Day coming up next next month. If you go around town, you'll see some flags that are really disrespectful. They're torn up, they're dirty. As a matter of fact, when they put up the flags last time, they were, some of them are still rolled up. <coughs> So anybody came in, a dignitary, anybody to our community, and they saw how we disrespect the flag, it, it, it wouldn't be good at all. No. Uh, so I, I need an update, Mayor, on who's in, in charge of that, um, whether we, when we put the decorations up, whether they'd be Christmas and then take them off. Uh, what's the process on that? But I. I Besides the Christmas decorations, which I just threw it in the mix, but it's the flags that it's the big. That's that's the that's my big concern. And the other thing is that one of the citizens that that called me said that he has called the city, and he has brought it to the attention of, of the city, and then there's no follow. There's nothing there. Okay. So. Okay. So, I'm happy to sit afterwards and get some details from you, but we'll we'll follow up on that. My my concern is on the on the flag on the flag problem. Um, I want to I want to react a little quicker than yeah. bringing this up at your next meeting. Absolutely. So so let's let's just huddle afterwards and we'll see what we can do to get that straightened out. Thank you. Uh, I'll, 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 I have a question, uh, Mr. Farad. Did uh, did they order any more flags this year for uh, for the event of the uh, for Memorial Day? We only, only for Memorial Day, yeah. ordered, not for Bell. Those, uh, those are the small flags we put at the pen. There we go. And, and we ordered. Uh, you got new flags for Memorial right. Day. We ordered a bunch of them. I think what Robert's them. talking about are the flags that we put up on the on the right. light right. poles. Right. right, the flag poles. Mm -hmm. Not the, the ones that were flying on the city hall light poles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not the one you're talking about. Not the one that's flying on the flag poles. The one that we put on the light pole, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the just around the, I think that anywhere in the city, you know where there are flags, then let's just have good flags if we're going to have them at all displayed. Th those are the small ones, huh? Yeah, some of them same, are same, small, yeah. Same ones we use at the yeah. cemetery? No, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. no, no. no, no. <coughs> the banner style that hook up on the, f on the light posts oh. going down the right road. Now, right now we have the fall, the fall banners up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, do we have enough flags to replace those? No. Well, we're gonna have to find out what we're really doing. Well, even if they're not replaced, then take them down. Yeah. You know, the flags should should look appropriate, or take them down. Yeah. That's that's all I'm saying. 
Well, I got somebody you. in the city is in charge of that. So they need to look at that. Is the, is the flag well represented or not? And, and if it's not, then take them down. And, that, and that's the rule. That's the, well, that should that's the, the official rule. rule. That's that the, should be the rule. And if it's but warranted, but, but the, painted, thing, the thing that concerns me, Mayor, is when they call the city and somebody answers the phone, then look into it, follow up. And, and again, you know, if we need to discuss it here, fine. But like you said, Jane, you know, we'll get together, we'll talk. Like right after, I'll yeah. sit, whatever time we need. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, the thing is, that the reason I'm saying is a memorial. I mean, Veterans Day is, well, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's already on us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's already on us. I don't know, I don't know, hopefully you can. Well, if we can't get a replacement quality flag, we'll take them down. we're going to take it down. Yeah, just take them down. Yeah. I just want to make sure that we're, that we're clear because we're, we putting up flags for those days on the light bulb. They're not up right now. I know. There's nothing yeah. to take down. Yeah. So, so I'm not, if, I'm not if quite those sure are, the comments if are. those are the quality of a new flag, we won't put them uh -huh. up. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Oh. <laughs> I'll say thank you. All the favors. Uh, 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 uh